Uh, thank you, Anne. You know, it is just so inspiring to be here. You know, when you read the newspaper these days, much of the news around Haiti is, you know, it's really bad, it's really good, it's really simplistic and infuriating. And it's people taking pot shots at each other and big business and big politicians. And, you know, all that kind of goes away when we come here tonight and celebrate a much more nuanced and real and rich uh, story about what everyday people, real people, are really doing with their own life and heart and soul every day to make other people's lives better. And that's what Funk Jose has been doing for long before the earthquake and started doing again the morning after the earthquake. So this is, this is real people doing real stuff for their brethren, and I think it's very powerful and refreshing. So I'm glad to be here. But, but here tonight, we're focusing on just one aspect of, of Foucault's work, and that is the work that they do with the extremely poor. And, you know, sometimes people that have been following microfinance, you know, ask, like, why this differentiation between the super poor and the kind of poor? Um, I like to call them super poor because there's sort of a, there's a hopefulness to that. But, um, you know, why? It's because microfinance works. It's a huge success story. It's transformed lives. It's a revolution in financial systems. But microfinance does not work for everybody. For people that have no income, no asset, no livelihood, they have no capacity to repay debt. Because microcredit is, in the end of the day, debt. It's micro debt. So debt is not the right instrument for people that have no income. And this has caused, I think, several of us in the micro, lots of us in the microfinance field, field, feel that we got to find another way because there's a whole there's maybe a billion people in the world for whom microfinance, wonderful as it is, isn't the right answer. And that's what caused a number of us to sit down at CGAP and with our partners at the Ford Foundation and elsewhere to think, what can we possibly do to help create pathways out of poverty for those people who have no hope, no livelihood, no traction on anything that they can then ultimately access microfinance, micro debt, because remember, you know, finance doesn't create economic opportunities. It can enhance them once they're there. But you can't start with debt. So, um, so Fon Cose and, uh, and the Chevalier de Mayo, Mayo program, with Anne at its eager head, uh, became part of this experiment, which, uh, again, CGAP and the Ford Foundation launched a few years ago, three, four years ago, I think. Um, and of course, typical Anne was right there at the front of the class saying, you know, she wanted to lead this thing and you were, yeah, Fon Cose was the first. An experiment to see whether by carefully sequencing injections of grants and stipends and, you know, a chicken or two to create short-term cash flows and then a goat or two to create longer-term assets and then training for the livelihood and then teaching people to save the money that came from that livelihood, and then ultimately ensuring that they might be able to take on a credit. Could this thing possibly work? And as Anne said, we inspired ourselves by the extraordinary program uh, that Brock in, in Bangladesh has launched, which has reached almost a million women uh, with this sequenced you know, grants <coughs> plus training plus savings, then maybe cre uh, credit later. Almost a million women have been reached by this program. And roughly three quarters of them actually succeed and graduate and become self-sufficient out of that, which is extraordinary. So that was an inspiration. We sought to see if we could take it globally. And today, again, thanks to Foncose's leadership as the first pilot, um, CGAP and Ford and others are working with now 10 pilots in countries as diverse as Yemen and Ethiopia, you know, Ghana, India, Pakistan, where these programs are working. Um, and that's, and, 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 which is cool. And everyone sort of said, this is really exciting to, to try to work with the super, super destitute. Can you really build them up so that they can be responsible borrowers and have businesses? And many were skeptics. And so we had very rigorous academics following us all along, some here at NYU, led by Jonathan Murdoch. 
um, who tested this and have done the academic studies and that have shown definitively that the clients at the, uh, at the graduation end of this are, their children are better nourished, they're in school, there's less days of hunger, there's a roof on their house. They are definitively, academically proven to be better off, which is great. <laughs> yes. But I, actually, I, um, as many of you may know me, know, you know, I kind of didn't need the academics to know <laughs> that, because having spent a fabulous week with Anne and Rita Roy at the MasterCard Foundation and others in Haiti, in terrifying boat rides and through horrifying trips up mountainsides, um, I, I only you had to, you could see clearly for yourself the women that we met that were at the very beginning of the program that were just being identified by Franck Jose were totally different women from the ones that were just graduating. The women at the beginning were were uh, unkempt, their eyes were downcast, their body language was shrunken. They were sad, they were hopeless, they were disconnected from society. They didn't have any neighbors that came, cared for them. Nobody ever stopped by their house to say, how are their children doing, how is the, how is the goat doing? The roof was pouring with water. They didn't see any way out. It almost felt like none of them ever had a mentor or a mother or a grandmother to teach them the basics of how to do stuff in life. They had no community, they were disconnected. Uh, those are the women we met that were at the beginning of the program, and my God, that that phone calls a staff found them all and worked with them one by one to build that hope, to create the mentorship, to show them the health services that were available, to teach them about education services available. And at the, I then met a group of women, I think a few groups that were at the end, that were graduating, that were close to the end of the 18 months of this of this intensive support from Fon Jose and, and the staff. And it was like a different population. These women were rushing, they were laughing, they were bossy, they were sassy. <laughs> they were jostling for attention, they wanted the, sh the camera on them, they wanted to show off their goats, they wanted to show off their roof. They were laughing, there were tears of joy. These were Haitian women. These were proud Haitian women. That's all I needed to see, was that incredible transformation, that 18 months of, of tender loving care, finance, uh, and, and help needed. So what did all this take? And then I will, I will finish on this. Um, it took three things, it took many things, of course, but it took three basic things. It took um, partnerships, and really a lot of creative partnerships, and generous partnerships. When we realized that all the, was it the, the goats were dying because of some disease, you needed a veterinarian to be involved. It took partnerships with the healthcare society. It took help, partnerships with other entities, and it took generosity. Nobody cares who gets the credit as long as, sorry, no one cares who gets, how does it work? Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, there's no limit to what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. Of course, I've heard that attributed to a number of different people, so I'm not sure about that, but. Um, so partnerships, it was one. Second, finance. Uh, the MasterCard Foundation through MEDA, and many others, you know, generous finance made this work because it's not cheap. But when you compare this methodology, which makes people independent after 18 months, versus a long-term welfare system, this has got to be very attractive, right? <laughs> and then mainly, and most importantly, and what I really would like us to celebrate uh, tonight, is it takes an unbelievably dedicated, committed staff and loyal and just absolutely, the staff that I work with and we met, starting with Anne, but with Gauthier especially, and Pascal, and S, I never understood how you spell S's name, but S. <laughs> um, these are the, I have to say, in my 30 years uh, career, I have never met a group of people that cared so deeply and worked so hard beyond the call of duty to make sure that what they were doing was right for the people that they were, were their clients, that would walk over the extra mile in Hill and Dale, would get up on Sundays, would do whatever it took to make sure that those clients got what they needed to succeed. And so I would like to just pay a tribute to. <laughs> so, Father Joseph, I hope you're proud, and I hope you're proud. This is the most extraordinary group of people I have ever seen working on a problem, and it's what Haiti needs to achieve what it's going to achieve in the future. Thank you.